Hi there, my name is Anderson Mancini, and thanks for joining me at the JS Game Pass Summit. Uh, we will talk here about 3JS game development and how can you start your journey learning it. So let's dive right in. Uh, um, by the way, I'm 43 years old, creative developer from Brazil, and I'm founder and CTO of Neltix, a company that is based on Brazil, of course, as a creative studio. And I work with companies seeking ways to increase engagement through digital interactions. And I would say that's why game is usually part of my daily routine at my work. And I want to talk to you about how did I end up knowing about 3JS anyway. Like I usually say that I'm a developer trapped in a designer body. Like I have worked with UI and UX designer since I was 18. Uh, but my real passion was always 3D modeling. I love this stuff. And I was seeking a way, how could I combine my 3D knowledge modeling skills that I gained over years with my gaming experience? And I, about four years ago, I decided to bring my 3D modeling knowledge to the web somehow. And I feel that most websites in my country, especially, they lost their appeal after Macromedia Flash became obsolete. And Macromedia Flash was the one, the one thing that I was using when I was creating my stuff uh, before starting in this journey. And then I became aware of 3JS. So like, uh, it was incredibly hard to find someone to hire for my company at that time. And then I decided to learn it myself to give a try. Uh, and what started as this learning endeavor very quickly became like this passionate obsession. Like, and that's why I'm so excited to be here to give you some tips on your journey, try to teach you how can you improve your way of learning 3JS and to show you that learning this can be both accessible and very rewarding. So let's talk about what is 3JS anyway. So 3JS is an open source JavaScript library. It is used to create 3D interactive experiences on your browser. And it was created by Ricardo Cabello uh, in 2010. And now it is maintained by hundreds of developers all over the world. I would say me included somehow. And it abstracts the complexity of WebGL, which is like a very complex way of creating 3D for the web. But basically, that means that we can run GPU accelerated apps without running or installing anything extra on your computer, meaning no extra plugins are needed. And across, it is cross-platform, meaning that you, your work can run on any browser. And I would say more than browsers. Any modern browser can support 3JS. And we can extend it by using physics libraries, animation libraries, and many more stuff. So you can add functionalities to this application, to this library. And Let's see how it looks on code. So I can show you a simple example, very simple example, how it looks on code. Uh, this is a simple example. I know it is not exciting at all to have a rotating cube on your screen, but I want to show you how small code that you need to render a rotating cube on your screen. And everything that is written there, it is basically trying to mimic something that happens in like in our in our real life so if it was in real life that would be like a studio or like a movie recording studio so to start you need your scene so you need to have a place to to record your your movie then you need like a camera to record things then you need a renderer so you can see what is being recorded by that camera and then you have actors or objects that will be recording. And this is exactly what is happening in those lines. So it is very straightforward to understand using this comparison. And I was want also to talk about React Tree Fiber. So React Tree Fiber, it is more suitable to you probably if you are more familiar with React framework. And we will see why. 
Uh, React Free Fiber, of course, is a React renderer for 3JS. It was created by Paul Henschel in 2019, and now it is maintained by hundreds of developers for point members community. And you can build your scenes using components to keep everything more readable and more organized. We will see an example in a few minutes. So your components can be reused. Uh, it has an extremely extensive ecosystem with a lot of new things being released like every week, I would say. And we have a lot of helpers created by other developers that are available for free for us to use. And we can see like an example on code. This is the exact same, not exciting at all, rotation cube. But now we are using React Tree Fiber. And as you can see, it is much more organized and compact because it is using components to structure everything. So of course, uh, the, my, the my box component, it is using a composition. So everything that is needed for that specific component is compacted or uh, packed in this component isolated thing. And then you can import that on your canvas and you have the same scene. Uh, and here's an example of a comparison between FreeJS, which is already short, and React Street Fiber. So of course it is simpler because he is using components. But what is happening here, it is like basically the same code. Everything is just organized in a different way so you can get better understanding and better usage of the library. And I'm, I'm not trying to convince you to use React Tree Fiber or React. I'm just seeing the benefits of using compositions on your work. And what is the, another beauty about components? Because they are easy to reuse. So if you want another cube on your screen, all that you have to do is just to duplicate that line, and then you have another rotating cube. And of course, you can pass props. So you can change properties from the inside component from outside, which is great to keep everything organized. And of course, as I talked to you, we have components from Dre. Dre is a collection of growing components like and helpers that you can import into your scene and it is free to use. So if you want to have orbit controls, like I have in this example, we can rotate around now uh, in that scene. All that you have to do is to import orbit controls from the Ray library. And it is that simple. And if you want, for example, to have clouds on your project or your game, you don't need to code it. Like someone already did it for you. You just import the cloud component also from Dre and then you add to your canvas. And it is simple as that. And Dre has more than 150 other helpers like this for you to use. So the secret is to know them by visiting the React Tree Fiber documentation. And let's see now some more exciting examples how you can use React Tree Fiber and 3JS and what can you build with this library. So let's see. Uh, those are some examples of my recent projects. And as you can see, we have like vi journey visualization. We have product configurators like the GSI Games Sim Industries with that beautiful wheel controller for like car simulation. It is amazing to see things like that running on your browser without installing any plugin at all. And and those are other two examples, like one for Dairy Farmers of Canada from Nautics recent project and Immersive Studios Auto Automotive Showroom. And those are all powered by 3GS. And again, they run with a great performance without installing anything extra on your browser. You can visit those addresses, those uh, links, uh, just by searching on them on Google if you want. And if you want to see more examples like this, you can visit my website under someonsenior.dev or 3js.org, which is like amazing for getting examples. They have a lot of showcases on their homepage. 
So you definitely should uh, like take a look at that. And of course, we are here to talk about games, not projects. And yes, you can create games using 3JS. And let's see some examples like of games created using this library. Uh, here we have like two amazing examples from Mercy Mitchell. Uh, and like they are so beautiful that it's hard to believe they run on your browser and you don't need to install like anything extra. So they are really, really good. And here are some more examples. Like we have the Elysium by Ebenezer, which was released, I guess, last month. And then we also have Choo Choo Word from by Illusion. Those are also great examples. Some of them are also multiplayer. So you should definitely take a look at those links and see by yourself how they work and how beautiful they are. They really look like an application, not a website. And for more games like this, you should also check this website, webgamer.io, which has a lot of other examples of games using 3JS. And I want to take this opportunity to talk to you about creative development, not only the game development. So I'm creating this game with my friend Leandro Castanho from Argentina, and this will be released soon. So I want to show you a little bit of the creative process. So we start by gathering a lot of references and trying to define a style for a game. Of course, we had this idea to build a pinball machine game using 3JS. And we used, in this case, artificial intelligence to grab references and potential designs on the game. Then we start by collecting assets or creating new assets for our game to create the board and the, the overall mood we want for that specific game. And then we create a visual concept, which is, of course, like experiment evolves, experimenting with lives, with the visuals of it, and the overall guideline for the game. And then finally, we create the board, like the final layout for the pinball machine. And uh, this is a gameplay prototype. Like it is just to test the physics and the overall interface. It is, of course, currently under development. So be sure to follow us on Twitter or YouTube so you can follow like the progress on this game that we are creating. So the physics works, but nothing else for now. But this is a little bit of the creative process of creating a game. And so you asked, is 3JS a game engine? No, it is kind of like. The short answer it is no, because it is a generic 3D renderer. So things like physics, like animations, you need to do yourself. But as I showed you, we have a lot of things that you can add as an extra to the 3JS to transform it in a game engine. And if you want to really dive in into the game development using your browser, you should also know about Play Canvas and Babylon. They are more focused WebGL uh, game development. I will not cover them here because it is like another course, let's say, uh, but you should definitely check them out. And I want to share you like a little bit of my learning path. Uh, so let's see how we can start learning 3JS. Uh, this is my path. I want to tell you that it works for me. I followed this when I was learning it, but your path might be different. So use it with caution, okay? Uh, we can like start by mentioning that you need to have HTML and CSS knowledge to start with this. This is a mandatory thing. And also JavaScript knowledge, it is a requirement because everything that we'll be creating will be using JavaScript in the end. So, I recommend this course. This course can teach you all the basics of JavaScript. If you never saw JavaScript before, uh, you just search for learn JavaScript free camp on YouTube. It is a great course. And if you want to use React Tree Fiber, of course, React knowledge is yeah, a requirement. And I recommend you to search for Joy uh, of React course by Josh. It is a paid course, but 
It has hours and hours of videos and exercises, and it is beginner friendly. So if you never saw React before, don't worry, you'll be covered. And it is another great course. And then after learning the basics of JavaScript, I recommend you to learn uh, 3D software and why? Because creating a 3D game in a 3D library without having prior knowledge of a 3D software will be very challenging. So I encourage you to learn the basics of any 3D software you want, just to, get a, just to have an interface to play with when you want. And I recommend the Blender 3D, of course, because it is free and it is the one that I've been using all over the years. It is very popular, so you can find a lot of free courses and a lot of free content on the internet. And you can start with this tutorial by Blender Guru, and this will teach you all the basics that you need. And you can also learn Spline these days. So Spline is a 3D software used to create 3D interactive experiences in your browser. So it supports native 3JS and React 3 Fiber export. And just to mention, this entire 3D software were created using 3JS or based on 3JS. So you can see the power of it. It is pretty crazy, isn't it? So it all runs on your browser. You don't need to install anything. So you should definitely take like a look at this at least. And after learning the basics of the 3D software, what I recommend is you to follow two possible paths. So you want to learn using free resources would require more discipline and patience from your side, or you can learn by using paid resources to speed up things for you in a more structured way, let's say. And let's start by the free resources. If you just type like 3JS, learn 3JS, 3JS tutorials on YouTube or any platform, you will find a lot of great things to learn from. I would start with the 3JS documentation because there is a lot of things covered there. So it is a great place to start. Uh, if you like books, this Discover 3JS book can cover all the basics that you need. And if you are like me and prefer videos, there are tons of videos teaching the basics of the 3JS. And you have a great free course uh, just search for this 3JS tutorial for absolute beginners and you'll be covered. And of course, if you want a paid resource, like if you can afford it, the most complete course for sure is 3JS Journey by Bruno Simon. Like it is everything that you need in one place. It has more than 72 hours of video and you can go from the absolute beginner to advanced. And this is the way that I ended up using to learn 3JS. I would say that everything that I know came from this course. So it is amazing to be honest. So you should definitely take a look at this. And moving forward, after you have the basics of 3JS knowledge, then you can study more specific game development courses. And we have a lot of them as well because 3JS, it is in the field for quite some time, more than 10 years. So a lot of other developers more experienced than us can teach us. So you have, for example, Nick Lever course, 3JS game development. It is very specific. It is a paid on Udemy. And you also have Baba Sensei course just released free on YouTube, which is great. So they are very great ways for you to start game development. and. Remember to start with the easy ones and not the most difficult games so you cannot get frustrated with yourself. And after creating your first basic game, you can expand your knowledge and you can do so by learning, for example, more about 3D modeling because that will enable you to customize your 3D assets or to create your 3D assets. And you can also learn GLSL shader language, which is create, which is, um, I'm sorry, you need to cut this part as well. You can also learn GS, GL, oh, this one is difficult to say. I'll do again. <laughs> you can learn GLSL shaders to create unique materials, unique like shaders, unique post-processing effects. It is amazing. 
You can also learn an animation library like GSAF, React Spring, or Firmware Motion to help you with the animations on your projects. And depending on your game requirements, you can also learn visual effects, post-processing, particle systems, and much more. So of course, we have disadvantages like anything. Like the biggest issue when we create games using 3JS, it is the performance. And I would say any web platform. But 3JS runs on your browser, so complex scenes can drop the frame rate. But like the browsers are gradually improving on this. So we will be covered probably in a some time frame ahead. And it would be very hard for me to give you tips on performance because we have limited time here, but we will have a discussion tomorrow. And there I can have more time to share with you some techniques we can do to improve the performance. So be sure to visit us tomorrow for those tips. And one last thing that I want to say, it is like, don't try to learn all at once because it is hard. Like, of course, you need time and start with the basics, create very basic games at the beginning. And this will give you the experience that you need to move forward. So be patient with yourself. And I want to thank you very much for your time. Like, I hope you enjoyed as much as I did. And I hope that my knowledge was helpful to you. And don't forget to follow me on Twitter and on YouTube so you can get more tips and inspiration. And I hope to see you soon. I wish you a great day and bye-bye. So first things first, we need to get into the audience poll. So the question was, have you heard of 3JS before? I'm expecting most, like the vast majority. And we're seeing 89% yes with only 11% no. Does that align with about what you were thinking? Uh, actually, no, because like I, I never noticed that people will talk about 3JS prior to like my talk. And that was fantastic because now people eventually like know about 3JS before, which is amazing, especially on the game community. I don't think most of the people are aware of 3JS and Babylon, those complicated names that only developers know about. So yeah, it is great. But, 86% know about 3JS. Interesting. Yeah, I guess the, the circles I frequent, it's uh, it seems very popular. It's almost like a go-to. Uh, most devs I talk to when they're like, I want to do you know, 3D on the web, they're probably not going to write it from scratch, even though that might be their usual MO. Uh, and 3JS and Babylon, yeah, they're, they're, they're great choices and uh, very, uh, very prolific. All right. Mm -hmm. So let's move into questions for you specifically. Uh, and about your talk. So um, how long does it take to learn 3JS specific to game development? I would say like something like three to six months is you dedicate like yourself every day. Like that took me not being a developer like or designer who can develop one year. So I just learned from one year, the entire year before being able to create something. But someone who has like a development background for sure would be shorter. So three, six months. Wow. It's a, it's a big piece of software, right? It does so many different things. It's got so many options. It can, it can do so much. So yeah, it can take some time to kind of, kind of master those tools. Right. Uh, great answer. Yeah. Uh, so JS Game Dev Summit is a, we're a worldwide summit. We've got people right now watching us from all over our lovely planet. And so this is a great question for you: is uh, what type of games are popular in uh, in Brazil where you are? Uh, so not popular to me because like I, I'm not a football guy, but like I have a lot of old friends. They only play FIFA on their PlayStation Five, which I think it is like a. a, a you misusage of that device because the device is so powerful and they used to play FIFA. So yeah, Brazilians really like football, even from the digital ones. Yeah, not me included because I like very other types of games. Yeah, I, I think earlier you were saying uh, Resident Evil 4 is among your favorites. Yeah, exactly. Love it. Exactly. I've played that one myself, yeah. <laughs> Good stuff. Um, here's a good one is for you, what is the most difficult and most fun part during creating a game? Mm, uh, the most Tough question. fun, of course, is, uh, yeah, it's a great question. Like 
that I would say the fun it is to trying to replicate the things that make makes my childhood and things that reminds me the good things that I like experienced in my life. So and they are somehow connected to the games that I play throughout my life. So yeah, this is the fun part. And the most difficult one for sure is to find good references, answers. So I'm stuck over flow guy. I'm reading that like at night on my cell phone, trying to find answers for my problems. And because I'm not a native speaker, like an English native speaker, sometimes I have difficulties to formulate the question, even for chat GPT to get the answer. So yeah, that is not the fun part. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, that's a really interesting perspective. Um, here's a good one for uh, people getting into making games is, um, what kind of advice would you give for people who are just getting into it, just starting to create games? Yeah, I would say start it simple. So like we, we, we that. have been seeing this, all of this presentation here, this event, like we can keep it simple to make it faster to learn. So you don't have to create like an FPS game to start. Start with the simple ones, like the, the tic-tac-toe, all the simple ones that you can gain logic because once you have the knowledge of the logic behind games, you can start playing with different logics and merging two types of game together. But yeah, starting it simple. And yeah, I would say also using physics because it is simple to have games using physics, counting numbers, and then you don't have too much, you don't have to do much because the physics engine, it is doing the work for you in the animations, making it like fun to play. So yeah, physics and keep in simple. I love that. Yeah, I really agree with the physics aspect. Um, in my earlier career making games, I was kind of of the opinion that it was a little simpler to make like turn-based games right? Because you don't have to worry about this constant tick and stuff happening and it's easier to log stuff and you can isolate your problems with like, I'm moving this unit to here, like in chess, I'm moving the pawn up two spaces, easy, cut and dry, simple, right? But you're so right that, you know, if you tap into the power of physics, which is really easy to do on the list of like libraries to tap into, there's so many good physics engines. There's so many good open source ones. They're available for 2D, 3D, whatever you want to do. They're all out there. And you get so much raw power from, you know, it's, it's just so fun to like bounce a ball, like, you know, the ball, the cup and ball game or like the paddle ball or like, you know, a football or we call it soccer here in the States. But like you've got like a just a football, you can just bounce it on your head, you can kick it in the air, you, you can juggle them, you can have infinite fun um, with physics. Yeah. And uh, I think 3JS is a really great entry point for that because it's so easy to get uh, up and started. Like, as you said, learning the whole thing can take several months, but sometimes just rendering a ball and then attaching physics can can get you where you need to be, right? Yeah. All exactly. right. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, thanks so much for these great questions and answers. And we loved your talk. And uh, Anderson, just thanks so much for being here. Thank you very much. See you guys.